so the Klosterman's edition of Heidegger, uh, which, uh, so far as I know, was not um, brought to fruition, listed 102 works, which were um, apparently to be designated as ways rather than works. Um, the editions that I've studied um, of the Gesamtkunst work have usually been something like, uh, I don't know, like 20 volumes or so. But um, in any case, in the 102 uh, uh, ways edition, the second book is Being in Time. The third book is the Kant book. Uh, the first is the collection of um, the early writings. Um, so that uh, the neophytes who uh, focus on, and often these are also professors um, who insist on um, playing this game of uh, being in time tells you everything, and then uh, there's something called the turn, where instead of going through entities to get to being, we're trying to get to this uh, later lecture, um, Time and Being. So it's true, in some way Heidegger kept that in mind, his whole uh, life. But on the whole, that doesn't really help very much. I think that the talking points and the general buzz uh, brings us into the question of uh, how so far is the question of Socrates about the um, Sucarion or the um, shrunken souls, which uh, Leo Strauss glosses as uh, memory men uh, or women, uh, who uh, merely repeat a series of phrases which <clears throat> they believe themselves to have understood sufficiently in order to um, uh, trounce anyone who uh, would say otherwise than what they know that they already know. Um, this Sukarion, in a certain sense, is for the first cave what Dasman is for the afterwards of the uh, second cave, the historical cave. Um, the understanding also, which is uh, prevalent uh, around Heidegger studies, is um, something, some variation of uh, Graham Harmon's saying that it, the 25 pages is enough. Because, uh, Heidegger repeats the same uh, basic points again and again. But the point of that is, uh, for instance, um, and saying that uh, in chemistry, if we go to a lecture on chemistry, we'll consider it to be in perfect order that we don't understand some things, provided we're not, uh, uh, don't have a PhD in chemistry. We'll take it for granted that there's some things that are not meant for the general public to readily understand, whereas in philosophy, everything, including Heidegger's being in time, must be, um, as it were, uh, made to fit the demands of the audience and so that the Sukarion or memory people can repeat a bunch of shit and just um, uh, know that they know something about Heidegger. But actually the reality is uh, the reason that Heidegger didn't stop uh, with the second of the 102 ways that he produced is because he was... Um, actually meant it when he said that uh, there's something still worth thinking in all the most basic things that we're uh, totally uh, used to. So, um, for instance, I give another example, <clears throat> besides from this um, more complex example of the, um, it's not really that complex, I think it's more the resistance of people that uh, know what they know and therefore aren't open to thinking it through on the um, transcendence issue, whereas transcendence uh, after Heidegger probably through an autistic reading of Kant in his teenage years kept to that reading. And since Heidegger is uh, very intelligent, it's hard to break him of that. But then Kassira was the only one who was at the level high enough, even in those early years of Heidegger, to actually demonstrate to Heidegger sufficiently that Heidegger came out and, and spoke later afterwards of his um, shortcomings on the point of interpretation. That whole theme of transcendence came in. So you could say, yes, through reading Kant, in some sense, 
uh, Heidegger, um, that Kant caused Heidegger to uh, produce his specific notion of transcendence in connection to being. But the problem with being is so <clears throat> unlike any uh, thematized um, problem encountered in the tradition, except that he says that it's supposed to be already there, um, that it really doesn't make sense to, even the word is misleading. He should have also used a new word uh, for uh, that, even though later he says that uh, using the new terminology was insufficient too. For example, the change from uh, um, autonomy in Kant to authenticity. Um, so one other example that, uh, which I think is a general um, wrong-headed view about Heidegger is the claim, well, it's the example in, on several levels. Uh, one, it's uh, the example of the Heidegger's uh, interest in, in pragma, in pra the pragmatic things, or in um, uh, practical, the practical things, that the ready to hand is the practical, and um, that uh, sawing or hammering or uh, tying one's shoes or something is obviously practical. Uh, but this already um, is a mis... There's a circle here, because then what does practical mean? Is practical just a blank, empty, um, new term that's never been used before, that's being now used by Heidegger to, uh, in a phenomenological way, point us to something? Or is it that we're supposed to carry over the sense of practical from the every, our everyday sense that we've grown into? Or is it we're supposed to go to uh, Socrates or to... Air, 